Good evening. I am Poobadi, Assistant Professor of BC Department of Nallamuthu Kaunra Mahaling College, Palachi. First of all, on behalf of BC Department, I welcome all the participants from various institutions around the world. I thank our college management, principal, head of the department for giving this opportunity. It's a great pleasure to welcome Mr. Shivasanthil Kumar, Senior Manager, DevOps Desalt Systems USA for being a resource person for this FTP. Mr. Shiva started his career as analyst programmer in Trigen Technologies. He has working experience in the leading companies like Wipro, Accenture, and iSpace. Currently, he is a senior manager of Desalt Systems, the 3D experience company. And we're proud to say he is also alumni of our college. Welcome you, sir. Now I hand over the session to Mr. Shiva. Thank you. All right. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, yes, the presentation about DevOps, right? Bobby, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, sir, it's visible. Okay. I did my BSc Mathematics. I did my MCA in NGM College. Uh, I'm so grateful um, to uh, to be a part of this uh, session. Um, thanks to Haridas and Hemalada for giving me this opportunity to address these uh, wonderful folks all over the world. Um, I'm so grateful to NGM College, which uh, gave me opportunity to, you know, uh, learn from the wonderful professors and, uh, of course, my dearest classmates who taught me a lot. Um, I have about 20 years of experience. Uh, uh, I started as a Java J2E server-side engineer and cloud architect, and then I turned out to be a DevOps architect the past four or five years. And um, I'm right now a DevOps architect at uh, uh, Dosa Systems. Uh, I'm also a technical evangelist. Um, uh, that's what I do uh, day in and day out. Um, it, it's an interesting concept that I wanted to bring it in. Um, all the while we were studying um, in college or even in some of the companies, we always talk about software development. But we, you know, I don't know how many of them are aware of DevOps, but uh, this is what is trending right now. Um, all over the world, they want to do DevOps. They do. They know the meaning or they don't know the meaning, uh, but that's what they do. So it's very, um, very hot in the market. Um, if you are a DevOps person, then um, you are like a hot cake, a piece of cake in the market. They're going to grab you. Without further ado, I'll go to the next slide. Um, what is DevOps? Um, you know, it, it's very simple. It's development plus operations, right? Um, a few, first few letters from development and some letters from operations, they made it like DevOps. That's what is DevOps. Um, so when we say operations, what is this operations? Operations is a very uh, abstract thing uh, in terms of uh, IT industry, I would say. Um, uh, say there are multiple parties involved when our roles involved in a company, depending on the size of the company. Some people, some small size companies or a startup company they do uh, wear multiple hats um, to do uh, any kind of role which is listed here. Um, the development team uh, develops some piece of code, piece of software, and then it is delivered to the end client or the customer. Who are all the parties involved in, in between? There are a lot of people. There are a lot of people like uh, QA, business, operations, support, IT, of course, um, sales, pre-sales, marketing, professional services, um, after you do everything, who does talk to clients? So that's where the professional services come into picture. Operations is also very key, um, uh, you know, very essential part of the uh, delivery as well. Who makes sure the software is in the right quality and it is delivered properly to the customer. Um, what do they typically do uh, in operations, like in our company or any other company, uh, that could be some of overlapping roles, uh, but these are the list of operations, the list of tasks that uh, an operations team do. Like a software configuration management, uh, which is very, very key for any company. Uh, validation, uh, you write a piece of code, 
and, and your software and then you it has to be validated before it can be built um, that's a very key thing for a, any software so we do the validation we do build build is the it could be a c++ code it could be a you know a dot net code or a java code it has to be built um, and then it has to be released formally uh, with there was some kind of a version number um, because we have to that could be multiple releases in a year and if we don't have the versioning then we are going to end up in a lot of issues um, just tracking the uh, software itself <clears throat> of course the deployment comes into picture depending on the software it could be a c++ or it could be a web application it could be any uh, application software it has to be deployed somewhere it has to be converted into an installer uh, it has to be done something for the customer to uh, see that software in a working condition. So that's why the deployment comes into picture. It's a very generic term, but it could be anything, um, I would say. Uh, after it is say, in terms of web application, um, it's very key to monitor it. Say you deployed it, how do you know it is behaving well? How do you know it is running fine? Uh, so it's very, very key for you to monitor your applications. Say you release a, um, a web application to the whole world, and then you know the the entire world is seeing your site or logging into your site, and they experience a lot of issues here and there. I, they don't see some images. They don't uh, see that this website is responding during the peak time. How do you address those things? It's very very key for a, any operations team to monitor it and address the issues uh, as and when you see it. Uh, so it's a, it's a very key point for operations, uh, a key task for the operations team. And of course, the environments. Um, you move the piece of code from one environment to another environment, ultimately it has to go to the production. So the environments can be a development environment, it could be a QA environment, it could be a pre-prod or a, a UAT environment, they call it. Uh, depending on the company, the name varies. Um, but general terms, they say pre-production, that's what pre-prod mean in a short term and of course the production um, uh, production team can be managed by the operations team depending on the size of the company or they could have a production support which can um, manage that as well and at any point of time if you guys have any questions uh, if you folks have any questions please raise your hand um, and I, I'll be able to stop and then give you uh, more details about it um, yeah, feel free to stop. I mean, this should be an interactive session. That's what I want it to be. So I, it's not that I talk whole time and then uh, it has to be a listen only mode. So what is DevOps? Uh, I, I wanted to keep it very simple. I don't want to give a, like a very lengthy uh, definition or something that nobody can understand. Um, so I, what I did is I, when I Googled it, I find a very, I found a very uh, interesting definition and very simple definition, I would say, uh, which is what it says here. Uh, it's a, it's, it's not a technology or it's just not a, a skill. Uh, it is, a, it is a kind of a set of practices or principles, uh, which combines the software development and operations. And its main aim is to shorten the development cycle, and 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 also delivers a software code a, a code with the highest quality it's really really important that when i say uh, software quality so you can always do multiple releases in a day uh, in a year you can you can do like 100 releases how many releases are uh, quality served with the uh, from utmost uh, quality the highest quality so that's what is devops is. so in this competitive world um, you know when as a customer i ask okay can you do this for me can you take this image off and put me some different image can you take this and then should give me a different look and feel uh, how soon um, a development team or a, a business team can address this issue um, do you say back in 99 2000 when i joined a company um, our release cycles were like uh, uh, twice a year if we and the deployment deployment day comes and then it's like chaos and people are nervous and uh, you know they prepare like three months in advance and uh, it, it is a lot of effort uh, back in those days like 20 years back i would say um, prior to that even more it is a, a big huge task so how frequently you can deploy things when a customer or a client or you know or a business wants to roll out something so that it can attract customers or investors 
um, in, in any ways. So that's the key point about DevOps, the continuous delivery with highest software quality. That's what is uh, all about. Uh, I'm just checking if there are any questions. Uh, no, there are no questions. Moving on to the next slide. So a typical pipeline looks like this. Um, I, again, I wanted to keep it very uh, simple and um, very um, easy to understand what's going on with the kind of a DevOps pipeline in any company. Um, if you see a, a DevOps pipeline, um, it, it has different environments, right? I mean, dev team uh, develops the code in his desktop or computer or laptop, and then he runs the unit tests. What happens, the unit tests, of course, I'll elaborate more on your unit tests. It's very, very key when you write a piece of code. You write a method, and if it fails for boundary conditions, like addition of a number, addition of two numbers, if you don't account for adding two, two negative numbers, then, then your method is not good. I mean, it fails there. So for that, you need to have unit tests. Say, if it fails, then it goes back to the development team. I mean, the, the, again, the, source, the code development, and he has to fix it, and then you know, uh, come back to the next stage, which is unit tests. Then everything is fine, unit test passes, then you go to the next one, which is a development server, which is meant only for the development server. Uh, you know, it is, you are getting away from the uh, developer's machine, but you're going to a server where exactly where your uh, code is deployed. It's nothing to do with your environment. It's not local environment. It is somewhere outside your uh, machine. So that's where it's very key for a dev server. Um, most of the companies, they have a, something called dev server. Some people, when they don't have that much infrastructure, they combine the dev server and QA to, into one uh, environment. And if you find any issues in terms of environment or anything that, uh, you know, which you haven't addressed um, outside your mission, then it goes back to the, um, the dev team again or the, the development again. So it's kind of a constant uh, feedback loop, I would say. It goes back and forth, back and forth until it reaches production, it has to be in a very good form so that, and, and you know, the QA, uh, the user acceptance team, the, the business, everybody is happy about your code. Everybody is happy about what you are trying to develop. The whole need of why you are developing this code or the piece of software is addressing everything. Until then, this feedback goes on and on and on. And you know, any point of time it fails, the, it, it, it doesn't meet the needs, then it goes back to the development, the developer machine or the development team. So it, it's that's the typical DevOps pipeline. So how can we achieve this? It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, yeah, we, we need to do this. Uh, you know, we need to uh, deliver multiple times with a lot of uh, quality, um, with a very good user experience, no downtime. Um, you know, you address everything. How do you achieve this? Um, there are some things that, uh, you, you know, people wouldn't have heard about, but all these are the trending technologies or uh, uh, terms that you will hear about uh, these days. Uh, can we do it uh, doing continuous delivery? Can we do a quality release without uh, rollbacks? When I say rollbacks, you deploy um, a piece of software and then you see it's not working properly. Then you have to roll back. Um, I, I'm pretty sure in software management uh, uh, lesson, you would have learned about it, about rollback when this piece of software is not running properly. A blue-green deployment or a canary deployment. Um, I'll probably come back to this if you have time about this um, uh, to uh, talk about, uh, talk more about this. Um, can we do that or can we do waterfall or agile? Um, I don't know. Um, at least in, when we were in college days, there was no address about agile mode, but uh, these days waterfall is slow, slowly uh, fading away and agile is everywhere. Agile architecture, agile uh, development, uh, you know, story-based development, that's what it's all about. Uh, there are some times that we were, we used to do uh, systems analysis and design, and yeah, before even we start coding, it used to take about six months. So it's it most of the time goes in meetings, meetings, and meetings. And uh, you know, you design, you document, and stuff like that. These days, um, you have an idea, you have a generic architecture you can follow. You start off coding in the second day or third day. 
So that's what is uh, all the startup companies are doing so that they can do, um, uh, you know, the time to market is much, much faster. Um, and uh, they can, the customers can see your product as soon as possible. There are a lot of ways that you can do, um, say, if your database is not ready, your API is not ready, then there are uh, uh, companies which provide you, uh, you know, on the fly databases, on the fly REST API. Then you can slowly come back to the development for yourself. Um, how do you do that? I mean, do you do all these things manually or um, uh, will you be able to do it? Yes, of course, you can do it manually too until um, when you are confident that you can convert this manual steps or manual task into a, an automation job or any kind of an automation that you can do. So that is one of the key points for DevOps. Um, it's not about automating everything. When you automate everything, you need to write some scripts, right? Uh, you need to write some scripts, you need to write some, kind of use some tools and do it, but how do you test your automation script? You're writing a piece of software and you have unit tests. And then you write some script to automate this to uh, reach the end customer. But that script has to be tested properly. If that fails, then the, the entire software you're developing is also going to fail and it, it is going to look um, very bad uh, for the customers, right? So that's uh, really, really important. When you say automation, you got to be really, really careful uh, you can automate any step, any uh, manual uh, step in the software development cycle, but you've got to be really careful when you're automating. You need to uh, make sure that your automation is not breaking anywhere, or else your software development is in jeopardy. The last but not the least, uh, there are so many points, but I have just listed a few things that uh, these days is very common. Um, the last one is uh, about business continuity plan. Um, I don't know how many of you heard about uh, BCP. Um, say you have a data center these days, everything is in cloud, so you are safe. But uh, those days, and even some of the, even now, a lot of companies they have their own data center where um, their production environment is in their own data centers. Um, though they keep these data centers in a very safe place where there is no hurricanes, there is no cyclone, there is no uh, earthquake or whatever it is. Um, but there are chances that that could be, um, that could be you know, uh, some kind of uh, natural disaster, maybe a power outage, which brings down everything, right? So as soon as it happens in that data center, there should be a one switch or one button that you, you press. It flips over to another data center and you have the latest software running there, which is running in the production environment, and then it shows up that for all the customers. If you don't do that, then when somebody reaches out to see your website or do something on you to use the software, um, they will be disappointed because it's gone. Um, any company, any bank or any uh, kind of an insurance company cannot afford to do that. So BCP is really, really important. Um, okay, so how do you, I, I want to just keep it very, very simple in terms of um, uh, DevOps. How do you do that? Uh, you can relate to any this thing, uh, this kind of feedback loop in your real in your life too. Uh, you know how often we do mistakes, how often we do something and then we regret. Oh, I wouldn't have done this. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. Oh, okay, I would have done this if I known this. So how often we do this? I mean, you go, you do something. Take for instance, kids in, at home. You know, you keep repeating the same thing. Don't do this. Don't do this. I mean, they do keep do uh, things like that but after some time they will give up and they will say okay why don't we listen to them and do this so that they don't tell you the same thing again and again right i mean same kind of uh, loop that i wanted to keep it very simple though uh, we can explain devops in a lot of ways i just wanted to keep this example right uh, you do something it could be anything it could be writing a unit test or uh, qa automation or um, it could be anything that you do uh, even you can take in real life example, like you can, whatever you're doing, uh, you do something and then you measure it. It's really important. You need to measure it. Um, say, how do you, for instance, how do you say yourself that you have improved on something in your life? Um, like you did something that uh, I stopped smoking or I stopped uh, whatever, right? I, 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 I don't do this anymore. I don't bite my nail anymore. How do you, how do you, uh, measure yourself uh, by just by measuring uh, yourself you will know um, 
uh, what you have avoided. So for just for instance, biting nail, if you keep doing it uh, and then you need to stop sometime, how many times do you do it? I mean, when you do it, you just make, keep marking it. And then after some time, how did you give up? You measure it, right? And then you analyze. After you measure it, you need to analyze. You measure it and you have numbers, right? You did this. Say, let's take an IT uh, uh, in our software development itself, a real-time example. When you deploy something, it fails. How many of, how often it fails? Why did it fail? And then you keep measuring it. And then you analyze it. Uh, and then you need to correct it. How do you, how do you correct that? Um, and once you correct it, you, you keep repeat it. Uh, you know, the, the same thing that you need to repeat it to stop uh, doing that again and again. That's what it is all about. Um, so this constant feedback loop is really important for you to correct yourself in terms of software development or in terms of anything that you do. Um, so each and every uh, task that I listed here is uh, very, very important for you to uh, do this uh, feedback loop. Um, I This is based on what um, the most of the software industry does. Um, but um, you know, I'll start go start going with these points so that uh, you know we can relate with whatever we are doing right now uh, in the most of the software companies. But that could be more than what uh, I have listed here, or that could be less in some companies. But uh, um, let let's start with this. Uh, SEM SEM is software code uh, configuration management, uh, where your code lives, where the code is uh, versioned and then released, built and released. Um, we should, uh, I think most of them are used um, GitHub or GitLab or the Bitbucket. Um, the branching is really, really important. The branching strategy is really important. Um, you could also have pipelines where you build the code and then you do the testing. And of course, the promotions. You know, you could be in your branch and then you want to move to the next level of branches where you want to release the software. So I'll keep it at the very high level. We'll come back to that in a different slide to show you what is an SEM branching looks like. Um, it uh, might be a little um, um, chaos there, but um, I can keep it simple there. Um, unit testing. Unit testing is really, really important. Uh, you uh, write a piece of code, and it has to be uh, tested well by yourself rather than going to the QA, um, and then uh, QA is quality analyst who uh, checks it out and finds out it's a very, very trivial bug that you didn't address. So unit testing is really, really important. Fail fast validation, I'll come back to that later. Quality uh, analyst, I mean, QA uh, is really, really uh, important. Um, we need to QA, uh, quality assurance is really important um, in terms of releasing the software. Um, uh, the next one is performance tests. How, uh, performance tests, again, is important because um, you can say that the piece of code works for like two users, three users. How about thousand users? How about million users? Um, there are sites that hit uh, during the Christmas time or even the Diwali times in India. Um, the site goes down uh, because of the offers flowing all over the place. Do you are you prepared for that? So that's what the performance test is all about. Uh, deployment automation. Do you do it uh, manually? Yes, you do it manually. But if you keep doing it. What happens if you miss a, a, a particular point? It's a huge mistake, it could be. So that's really important. So for each and every point I have mentioned, you can do this feedback loop. You do it, you do it manually, you do it whatever way you want, you make mistakes, and then you correct it. You analyze it, you correct it, and you repeat it throughout the year. You can start off as a manual process, but at the end of the day, you need to move towards automation, and it's a, and it should also be uh, effortless, uh, uh, you know, movement of the software uh, so that it's uh, easy for everybody. Uh, and we deliver the code much faster than anybody else, right? And the next one is infrastructure monitoring. Like, as I said before, you need to monitor the infrastructure so that, um, you know, you know, there is no um, uh, bad experience at the customer side. Data lake, it's again an interesting point. I'll come back to that when I have an individual slide. Um, uh, the next one, so I'll touch upon um, uh, the various uh, tasks that I listed. Uh, this is a very, very simplest um, uh, SEM branching and promotions. It might be a little uh, uh, 
too much for some some of them some of you folks but uh, i'll i'll keep it very simple and uh, i'll not spend too much time on this so uh, all the developers start with here feature branches you can have your own branch you can write whatever the piece of code where code you wanted to and then ultimately you want to push it to a branch called develop um, where all the developers can see your code that's what this particular line is all about um, so you know it's not just you there could be multiple developers who's developing the code in your team um, uh, and then it could be more than two developers too it's just two lines denoting but after you're done with the code when you're confident you raise a, mil, a merge request or a pull request to merge to a development branch which all the developers can see your code and all the developers code are merged here in this particular line um, and you imagine this as a timeline um, so that over the time period code coming from all over the place merging into a development branch and from there on it is when it is ready say you have a release in one month or two months or whenever it is ready you uh, release it to the release branch and from release branch operations teams takes over and then do all the validations QA uh, performance tests etc etc you name it you uh, whatever what you uh, the, the business wanted to do it or you wanted to do it before releasing the software then ultimately you release to the master branch master branch is the place that you um, you release the code to production ultimately depending on the company um, the master branches could be more more than one but i just wanted to keep it simple so right now it's only one branch which you release the software to the whole world and this particular line which is hotfix is really um, you know important um, say if it is there is a, a data patch or it could be any um, quick fix that you want to do it for uh, on production environment um, how do you do it um, you don't have to bring it bring the code all the way from here to here because you have all other software all other changes that you have done it shouldn't reach production um, all of a sudden which is planned for three months down the line so what you do is you create a branch from master branch and you do the small fix hot fix and then you release it to the customer of course you have to do the testing QA and everything on this branch and then everything is fine you merge it to a master branch and you release it to the production that's what is a uh, minor version um, uh, you know minor uh, minor version major minor uh, kind of versions that you have when you have these hot fixes released after you do the hot fix can it lie here it should go back to the development branch because this piece of fix that you have pushed to master branch should go back to your development branch so that everybody sees that change if, if not then you lose that change that you're doing so i'll probably stop here um the other ways it's overwhelming of information um i'll go back to the i'll go to the next slide um the build pipelines so the build pipeline typically looks like this right um it can be as simple as this uh, it's a very very simple simplistic uh, approach i could sh uh, show it for a pipeline you build you test you auto deploy and then it goes to the production and the production can be a manual step here it's just a play button um, nowadays most of the uh, software configuration management tools support this kind of pipeline uh, using a yml file uh, it's a very common yml format uh, all over the world you could do this it's a very very simple simplest way or you could do like this the bottom one which is a very complex one and it's very tough to understand by you know when you get into the um, a team or when you get into this kind of environment to understand this um, so you could do uh, multiple things with the pipeline so build the pipeline is really really key for your code movement from one environment to another environment or one branch to another branch uh, it's very very key for you or software development unit testing let me come back to the unit testing so um, it's really important for you to um, uh, cover your code with uh, with the proper test cases else you are in trouble um, say for instance I told you you write a method to add uh, two numbers and then if you don't cover for all the boundary conditions then the QA is going to come back with a trivial bug which looks really bad on you um, for for your team for you yourself and for the company as well right um, so there are a lot of things that we can do um, for uh, 
uh, unit testing. Uh, one of the uh, trending uh, thing is like test driven development. It means you write a, a test, then you develop the code. You write a test to fail, then you write the code to pass. That's what is test driven development to keep it simple. Uh, I'll not go details uh, much into details about TDD, but you can Google it and figure it out. It's an uh, uh, industry standard one and it is trending one. Um, and you fail any promotions, which doesn't have 95% of code coverage. Uh, why I say 95% is there are some piece of code that you don't have to do unit testing because it does a very trivial stuff. You write out, you use the function that the software is giving like for an average function that your SQL gives or some function which an SQL gives, you don't need to write a code coverage for that. So that's the reason they always have a tolerance limit of five percentage that you don't need to write the coverage, uh, code coverage for that. So you fail any promotion which doesn't have 95 percentage of uh, code coverage uh, so that it fails then and there with the developer mission on the developer mission itself. Um, you fail the promotion when the unit test fails, of course we have to do that. Um, uh, you need to religiously follow the test guidelines, uh, test case guidelines. Um, it means, um, uh, you know, not for the same name's sake. Okay, I wrote a piece of code and I wrote like thousand test cases, but it is not adding value. Then there is no way of, uh, it's not adding value for your software itself. So when you write a test case, you need to follow the proper guidelines and you follow it religiously. Uh, or when you say religiously, it's an industry standard word that we use here. So you need to do religiously not for the namesake and again of course i already repeated this avoid trivial bugs from qa when you write the proper test cases then you don't have to go through this next slide okay fail fast validation this is really really important you fail fast and you succeed faster right um so what happens i'll give a scenario you um you have several stages before it re reaches your software reaches production uh, it passes, it passes, and it passes. And finally, when it reaches um, um, production, it fails. Is it a good scenario? Or it fails as soon as you write a code, and then you try to promote, it fails. I would say fail fast is much, much e uh, faster, so that you are not exposed to the entire world. So fail fast is really, really important, not even in the software development, even in our real life. Like you fail fast, you fix fast yourself right so it's really really key i mean uh, i i i i like this term fail fast and succeed fast that's the reason i have put down this um you can take it in your real life example too when you fail then you address that uh, next time and then you don't do that right you spend too much and then you are in uh, bankrupt mode uh, then you address yourself not to spend too much uh, something like that um so that you can um, um add it to part of your uh, build pipeline itself like a piece of code that it goes to production it fails how can we address that you write a script however you want and then you detect that in the um, in the uh, build, build pipeline mode uh, step itself and see you can fail it so that the developer cannot promote that kind of code um, and again all runtime related issues should be anticipated and it should be added um, in this step so that uh, we don't run into any kind of issues in future, right? Um, saying of that, I don't know, um, Netflix is very common these days all over the world. Um, it's pretty good uh, in terms of content. It has content for every ages, all the ages. How how can uh, Netflix so be so popular when they have a video streaming uh, technology? Uh, they, when, when I say Netflix is successful, the main reason or one of the primary reason for Netflix to be successful is their uh, technology, their technology, their deployment strategy, and, and the way they address the software issues. I mean, they fail fast much before somebody fails your software. Like uh, millions of users throughout the world, they log into Netflix and watch a movie. What happens? It overloads the server, it bursts out, and then says that you cannot watch the video. If do you think somebody will buy a Netflix subscription if that kind of uh, you know uh, experience happens? No, nobody. I wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't buy it. Nobody would buy it. So these folks, they came up with it's very famous and uh, as I say, um, there is a open source uh, uh, code. What they do is they mimic this uh, kind of a failure in their uh, environment, in their production environment, and see if their software can recover from that quickly before even a customer sees it. Say, 
a million users all of a sudden like in the covid situation everybody wants to watch something at home uh, because they cannot go to the theaters um and there are a lot of good content in there in netflix so what happens i mean it overloads the server it bursts out have they taken care of this yes they have they using so many tools they have like chaos monkey uh, and it's a monkey security monkey on these uh, the name looks little funny monkey uh, because monkey is the one creates a lot of chaos in the forest or it, it can create anything for you uh, in terms of chaos chaos so they have kept the code um uh, script in that way which can break the software before even a customer can identify and then utter, uh, you know uh, report back to netflix so it's really important not just netflix so other so many companies which are really critical about their software being up and running uh, they don't want the customer reporting it is slow it is not working i cannot see this all those things they do it themselves they make it fail and they address it um you know not in production though they do it in um in the pre production or in qa um automation testing so uh, there are so much of uh, uh, testing involved um uh, in the, so the quality assurance is really really important uh, quality assurance team when you have a story um so to write a to keep it a very simple develop a html page so how does that html page should look so they have to give acceptance criteria uh, that's kind of an agreement that uh, or a contract that the quality assurance team and development has to come um, hand in hand um they have uh, smoke tests they have sanity tests integration tests regression tests they should also have a sign off say they test a piece of code uh, software and then they say they okay i am good with this that's kind of a really really important for a sign off without sign off you cannot be a move the code uh being the operations team member you cannot do that um so all these are very very crucial for devops to be function properly devops isn't a skill or a uh, or a tech stack that you can follow but it is really important for you all these teams to work together so that you can move the piece of code to the production at ease meaning you can do multiple deployments amazon deploys hundreds of deployments every year netflix does the same without even um uh, you know kind of a, um, a bad experience for the customer they do it like just like this uh, deployments um so all these teams have to work in conjunction uh, to make this release uh, really well challenge release yeah quality assurance most of the companies uh, the quality assurance team is always the villains because they raise defects and bugs right uh, at least we used to say the villain team um when we were uh, developing the piece of software don't look at them like that i mean they faster they catch your defects it doesn't look like a production issue or a, a software it goes to customer it comes back which is a very very uh, bad uh, thing for a uh, for a, uh, the company which develops the software so um qa has to be strict qa has to challenge the release qa has to uh, stop uh, the release when if it is if it is not in the right uh, state so it's really important um performance tests yeah so um any kind of piece of software uh, you develop most of the times they give, you get a functional requirement okay the page should look like this you check out on a car you do this then you, you know boom it's ready but what happens the non functional requirements i don't know how many of you uh, heard about non functional requirements it's all about uh, developing a software which can address set of users okay um uh, i i deploy a code i deploy a website uh, a, a person in sudan or a person in ethiopia can they access it without any issues if they cannot then if it is addressed for them too then there is no point in uh, deploying the code so that's where the non functional requirements coming comes into picture which can do your uh, stress testing load testing if it's all about api these days so api load testing ui performance testing because these days we develop a lot of javascript based uh, code uh, so the ui becomes really heavy um, so we need to do the ui performance testing which is really crucial these days mimicking production environment is again uh, important um, just for cost reduction uh, people used to do like production environment is like $1000 so i don't want to spend that much i'll do a little bit lesser so that the, you know i save some cost no that is not the way it works you need to spend the same amount which can mimic the production environment so that you can figure out what's going on 
to uh, to address that issue. So performance test, yes, it's crucial, um, you know, uh, for your DevOps. Deployment automation um, these days, infrastructure as code is really really uh, crucial um, because you do multiple deployments. Uh, deployment is a very generic word. Um, it it has so many uh, micro tasks in it. If you miss one, then everything screws up. I mean, you don't even realize what you missed. So that's the reason we wanted that to be uh, part of it, like a code which you can deploy, and then you version it, and then so that you can uh, uh, start using it, and anybody can change it, and it can be uh, properly tracked. Container-based development uh, deployment uh, these days it's very um, common to use Docker or Kubernetes kind of uh, some, uh, stack, um, which uh, avoids uh, dependency on the virtual machines, right? Um, you can do a lot of Googling about it and figure it out. Container orchestration, so you have 100 uh, containers. How can both all these containers uh, talk to each other? Rollback strategy, what happens if something fails miserably? How can you get back to at least the older version of the software? That's crucial. Right tooling, um, uh, you know, that could be thousands of tools in the web, but you need to pick the right tool, else you end up in a lot of issues again. Business continuity plan, like I mentioned, you need to have it um, so that when something happens at your data center, um, then you have, even if the, the cloud-based, AWS, something happens with AWS, do you have a backup? Or do you have a backup for an Azure um, uh, data center, you know, with a different region or something? We should have it, otherwise we are again, boom, we are in trouble. Right. Um, data lake is uh, really, really important. Uh, when I say measure and analyze, analyze. data lake is uh, again a trending technology these days. Uh, anything you write, an application log or uh, social media um, responses or any transactions, uh, data warehouse response or mobile transactions or anything you do, uh, you keep the data. I mean, of course, with the customer's um, uh, agreement, you have to do it. We cannot store customer's data. But anything related to the application, um, which happens day to day, you try to take it, you use it or not right now, but you keep it in the lake so that anybody can use it in future, right? And then you start developing, um, you know, visualizations, reports, dashboards, and you make decisions, uh, which is really crucial for DevOps because you need to address that back by the numbers. The numbers, when I say numbers, it's KPI. We call it. Uh, um, uh, key performance indicators, um, those are the ones which will uh, define um, uh, your improvisation on your software or your uh, on your process, you do it on a daily basis, right? Um, these are the list of tools that um, uh, we use on a daily basis. Um, again, this is all what I am aware of. Uh, I'm a Java JTU guy, so you will see a lot of related uh, uh, stuff in there. Uh, but again, uh, most of the things are common across uh, different platforms. Um, if you, okay, there are so many things. Uh, as being an, a student, what should I learn? I mean, there's so many things. You start small, um, you know, like I mentioned here. Uh, you start small, and then uh, it's always something is better than nothing, right? I mean, you these days, PowerShell, uh, which is Windows based uh, scripting, is really powerful for a Windows-based uh, administration. A shell script, like in the olden days, shell script is still strong. Um, if you want a little more further, you can use Perl or Python. Jenkins, it's a very simplest tool that um, very easy to use tool that you can download and use it anytime you want um, for your continuous integration and continuous deployment. You can start off very small by running a batch file, a very small batch file which says, hello world. Uh, you can do it through Jenkins and then you can start developing on yourself. Uh, Docker is container based uh, these days, again, uh, famous, but I have given it in a chronological order. Uh, you start simple and then you can go complex all the way to AWS. Oh, like AWS um, or Azure, you can just spin off an uh, instance um, and then you can start working on a Linux VM or a Windows VM um, and then you know you start playing around. So that you can put it on your resume and then you can explain what you have done. I mean, if not, you have, you're not master of everything. At least you can show them that you have done these things or you're aware of these things. So that gives a, a very comfortable feeling uh, being a student coming out of the college. Uh, at least I'll be happy if a student does all these. Um, 
again this is my um, this is not a technology book again um, i would say it's a very good book for everybody i read that every day uh, because it's a huge book and these authors are like uh, veterans they have done so many things um, uh, they work for a very good companies they came together and then wrote this book a uh, very interesting book um, i would suggest if somebody there is a ebook as well uh, if you cannot afford to buy it um and then you can know more about devops uh, and what it says uh with that i will open for questions i hope i haven't taken too much of time okay um i have some questions yeah, anyone have question now is okay what is the difference between data lakes and data warehousing that's a, a good question um data warehousing is um oil ap i will say uh, online trans uh, online uh, analysis process um a data lakes is like um, it's not uh, data that you play around uh, with the, your customer information or whatever it's about application log say a web server goes down it crashes or an image is not found um all those things you capture it in the form of a data lake this is mainly in, in terms of um, uh your day to day operations you want to address you use data lakes information to figure it out um i think um can you say any web link uh, i didn't get that question properly can you say any web link um i i don't know uh, probably a uh, vimal uh, could you be specific about uh, what is the web link you wanted um anyway i'll wait for vimal to uh, uh, ask question again um uh, which which is the best agile technology used uh, nowadays um there is no agile technology agile is a mode um, it used to be waterfall all these days nowadays it's agile um agile is um, a principle again uh, every company has its own um, uh, every company has its own way of dealing with things uh they can modify the way agile looks like say you are developing a piece of software um that, that it comes in the form of requirements then they uh, stop developing splitting into small stories uh and then they assign these small stories to each and every individual and you can and then they have like stand up meetings every day um and then the uh, you know there is also um uh, agile board or story management the story moves from your developer machine to qa to uh, done and then the qa takes up the story they test it uh, move it to done and then everything is done then it goes to production and it is ready for the uh, production uh, that's what it is so uh, so many questions coming in so yeah um, i didn't know who has uh, raised it but yeah so agile is not a technology it's a principle that every company can adopt um, and be flexible about what they wanted to do um is the from kartik and e is there any specific language for devops no it is not uh, like i said there is no it's not a technology it's a principle um they can you can use any any technology or any skills um, that you wanted to do but the whole idea of devops is moving the piece of code uh, of a piece of software with ease from your developer machine all the way to the production or a customer facing environment that's what is devops is all about you can use any technology you can use any language you want but it should fit your needs that's what it's all about uh uh, 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 uh what is the difference between gitlab and github uh, no they are not the same uh it's from nyana shekar kumar avel uh, uh, so it's not the same uh it's all built on top of git git is a base technology um it developed around 2008 or 9 uh, but there are so many companies they build their software on top of git like uh, bitbucket gitlab github uh, so many companies they have built on top of git by customizing things for their own needs like the pipelines they defined themselves for gitlab github doesn't have pipelines but you can use several other ci tools to do it um so that's what is uh, um uh, that's what is the difference uh, uh, between gitlab and github but it's all uh, based on uh, uh, git uh, as a base tool if you know git commands 
then it, uh, you know, uh, it's the same. Most of the things are same. Uh, for studies, okay. So Vimal, um, so weblink, there are so many uh, things. Uh, probably um, I cannot um, share it now, but um, you can ping me. I can write me email. I can send you so many links that that. What you wanted to learn, that's what the importance. If you be specific about what you wanted to learn, then I can um, probably um, get you the web links, of course. Uh, uh, Samuel, can you share the presentation? Yes, I can probably send it to one of your uh, professors. They can share it with you. Uh, data center versus cloud center. Data center is uh, where the premises that uh, you manage uh, this is by Alagu Mitra, I believe. Um, yeah, so data center is the place where you manage. Um, you have administrators who take care of it, um, and you need to have um, if anything goes then you are responsible. Uh, cloud center is like AWS, or even you can have your own private cloud yourself. Um, but uh, to be in generic, data center is that you manage. Uh, cloud center is something like a provider manages, like AWS or Azure or uh, Google Cloud, right? Um, um, the next one is uh, uh, how do you compare um, uh, SDLC versus Agile versus DevOps? Um, uh, I would say SDLC versus Agile. Um, is uh, right word, right to compare it. DevOps is um, can be achieved using Agile. That's what is all about. SDLC is again very common when software development life cycle. It's uh, it's a day to day thing. Um, but yes, DevOps uses Agile mode to achieve its best. That's what I can say. Um, can you specify any testing tool for image processing? Oh, I am uh, I am not very good at in the image processing. Uh, though we develop um, um, uh, software for um, CAD and CAM, um, but I, I am not really good at it. I mean, uh, probably I can look it up and give it to you because I am not a mechanical engineer or I am not into that kind of background. But yes, of course I can do that. Uh, I don't know who it is, uh, but yes. Um, uh, we could do that. Um, how data lake access uh, structured and unstructured data? Um, it's again a very, very abstract question, Apurva, but um, uh, data lake is meant for structured and unstructured data, but not like video data I'm talking about, like uh, for big data. It's completely different set of tools that you can use, like uh, AI-based tools and stuff like that. Um, but um, you, you can have structured and unstructured data in data lakes, but you need to write um, uh, transformation script to do uh, to convert the unstructured data to structured data. Uh, else, it's the data is of no use if you have an unstructured data. Uh, but ideally, data lake is for structured data. If you put unstructured data, you cannot do anything. So you need to do some processing to make the unstructured data to structured data. But it's a very good question, Apurva. Um, so I'll go scroll down. Um, yeah, basics of DevOps, Vimal, yes. The book I suggested, if you have an ebook, um, that is the best to start off, or you can even Google it, and um, uh, probably I can send you a link uh, if you want it. But the book is the right starting point. Uh, if you have an ebook, if you cannot buy, um, then that book is a very good uh, handbook for you. Uh, how to link all the DevOps activities at one shot? I mean, for to say instances, uh, to say, for instance, Jenkins can do all the DevOps functions. Um, yes and no. Um, I would say because Jenkins can do most of your automation, but sometimes it becomes overwhelming if you use Jenkins too much. Because that's the reason I want to caution you um, that Jenkins doesn't address everything. There are so many automation tools um, like um, uh, um, you know Terraform, uh, cloud formation scripts, and so many things that there are there that you can use in com combination with Jenkins, like Ansible or Chef. All these are uh, uh, DevOps automation, deployment automation tools that you can use in conjunction with uh, Jenkins. Integration with Jenkins, it makes your life easier. But Jenkins, of course, it can do everything for you, but you need to be a little more cautious when you're using Jenkins for everything because to maintain Jenkins with those many jobs or those many plugins, it's going to be really uh, tough. It's a good question, Yanis, by the way. 
when the product or version is ready who will be the first person to use end use to use end uses i don't know if uh, it's from archami uh, rajini but uh, i um, i didn't get your question right but um, if i get it right it means uh, you're trying to say if the product is ready the operations team is the one which takes care of uh, using uh, taking the code from one place to another place uh, to expose it to the end users most of the times operations um, these days the roles are overlapping if you start a company i cannot afford to have each team to do stuff so what i do is i ask for a devops person or i ask for a developer who can do operations and then i can hire him and then do everything rather than have like you know hundreds of people doing and i pay them and then i lose all the money for that so i better be cautious about that people small companies do different hat um but um, you know um, of course it is a, a operations team uh, a question from apurva is there any tool for testing in nlp i don't know what is nlp uh, could you be uh, elaborate about nlp i'll come back to you apurva may sorry i didn't i'm not aware of it um uh, what about uh, jenkinson uh, on uh, from maclin i don't know what is jenkinson uh, but if you're talking about jenkins is a good tool yeah you can start doing it but i don't know if i have addressed it uh, maclin you can ask me if uh, i haven't addressed um you can ask me more about it i can give it to you and i'm not running away so by the way the presentation i have my uh, linkedin and my email please reach out to me you can uh, invite me or you can connect to me in live via linkedin you can always uh, we can discuss about it uh, i'm not running away if i don't address your question right um uh, devops is which type of f testing uh, i don't know what is f testing from sumeg srikant uh, could you be elaborate about it um, i didn't uh, uh i didn't quite get this f testing mean what does it mean by f testing probably i'm not aware of it you you guys would have learned from that um um then comes uh, can you please share various tools i have a slide which have listed uh, from maclin again um i have listed so many on uh, one of the slides i think um, yeah these are the tools that um, it's pretty good you can uh, go over it um and then you can ask questions uh, again if you wanted to uh um uh, um thank you how to link all the devops activities at one shot i mean to say for instance yeah i think i answered this uh, nyan shekar about this is there any drawbacks for small projects when we adopt devops for a small organization excellent question deepash uh, harini uh no um again i told you like uh, for each and each and every use case you need to choose what you can afford like um you, you are starting a small company uh, a small idea that you wanted to be turning out to be a, a startup uh, i you don't want to bring in all the devops principle in there as i said you start the feedback loop as small as possible you start off everything with the manual stuff then you slowly improvise on it you just see um the area where you spend too much time that is where you need to bring in devops principle or automation or whatever you wanted it so devops uses to improvise your process it's not that you uh, for name sake you bring in devops and then you struggle with it because um, everybody mentioned about devops everybody mentioned to do this uh, but uh, i everybody said that we need to use chef but ultimately if you don't have the uh, skills or if you don't have people to do it then it's a problem for you so you need to pick and choose based on what you can do um well, when the product version is ready who will be the first one yeah what is vcs uh, i don't know what is vcs um, uh, i don't know probably i should google it and see is it um, um, i am not good at acronyms um, i don't know if it's a source code management system or something probably you can ask uh, i can google it and see or you can google it it's yourself maclin i'm sorry i don't know um sir at outset i could say good uh, i could say the presentation wonderful okay thank you uh, deepa harini uh, natural language processing uh, oh okay 
i am not um, aware of natural language processing apurva sorry i think you have so many things uh, to ask uh, um, excellent apurva but uh, i am not the guy probably um, i can check it out and let you know um, but yeah you you are asking something that i am not aware of um great um is there a, is a, a anitra manki a garbage collection service for um, uh, netflix i think so i am not uh, very sure um uh, about each and everything i know about chaos monkey which uh, overloads your server um i think um, it could be i, I don't know much about the hanitra monkey but uh, we can check it out uh, this is from jabesh sam it's, it's a good question yeah uh, you, you need to know more about these kind of technology it's really good and interesting right um uh, is there a version control system um that's where you your software is version so you write a piece of code and um, say a html page right um you worked on that html page i'll keep it simple or a javascript file you worked for like 3 uh, years how can you tell what you have worked or what you have changed 2 years back that's where the version control system comes into picture a piece of code um uh, you know that you write and you need to track it all the way so that um, you know you are able to um, you are able to see what changes you have done to that file that's where the versioning is coming into picture and that's what is version control system where github or gitlab or any kind of um, bit bucket uh, addresses that issue back in those days microsoft used to have those kind of uh, i think it's visual source vss um these days it's completely different it's all git based one and even um uh, microsoft acquired github so they are releasing Uh, tfs kind of uh, software azure devops kind of tools which is based again on uh, git um so it, um, uh, that's what is vcs mean um that's from maclin how can we uh, use a in devops um you can use i mean um, uh, um artificial intelligence is again about uh, training a model um say a is about models right i mean you create a model um it could be a regression model or it could be uh, any model that you are a binary classification model that you can develop all you need to do is you need to have some data that's where the data lake this is from sumeg it's an excellent question uh, sumeg uh, um sumeg uh, i didn't get the um uh, i didn't get his last name though but um it's an excellent question so um uh, you can have this data lake use that um data lake or data to um uh, uh, figure out uh, a kind of a model that you are trying to solve say for instance um um you know you, you what what happens what happened to this kind of um, approach uh, while you are uh, building a code is it successful or not successful then it's a binary classification for artificial intelligence right so then you have a set of transaction data for these kind of inputs or these kind of approach it failed for these kind of approach it it passed so you use that model and then you can always uh, tra- use that model for, as a transaction uh, history and then you apply to an existing thing then you, when you pass these 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 will it be successful or not so that's where we use uh, ai right or a machine language uh, machine learning uh, stuff so and again ai is a very generic concept uh, it can be potentially used in anywhere um but as far as i am concerned i am not a machine learning guy whatever i comes to my knowledge i have addressed you so yeah um where can I, where i can learn the devops course and uh, what are the opportunity uh, it's in uh, sumeg srikanth it's really um um uh, interesting concept and um, it's a high demand in there um for devops uh, generally you cannot be just a devops guy you you got to be like an operations guy with devops experience or you got to be a developer with the devops experience you cannot be just on devops guy uh, which doesn't add any value you got to be either one of this side like or a qa person with devops experience um you can uh, i don't know if there is any course on devops but it's a principle as i said before it's a principle um that you or a practice that you need to do it on a day to day basis or on a, uh, in a, in your own day to day activity um and then how much it has improved you need to address yourself i don't excuse me i don't have any course as say as per but uh, i'll probably see if there is any tutorial that i can give it to you sumeg shrikan so 
Uh, is there any levels of certification to become a QA? Yes, there are. Uh, it's from Deepa Harini. Yes, uh, for QA, um, there are so many. Um, I forgot the terminology um, that a QA person can um, uh, start giving certification. And uh, certification has a lot of uh, value. Uh, any company, if they want to hire you, if you have it, it has a um, lot of value in it. And there are certifications for uh, for other uh, QA automation as well. But you got to be a QA quality assurance guy to be an automation person, right? A QA automation person. Um, so yes, to answer your question, yes, it is there. Uh, but um, probably I can give it to you uh, if you message me and uh, tell you what is that exact name. Um, I forgot, but uh, I can give it to you, Deepa Harini. Uh, anything else? Did I answer all the questions? Um, uh, sir, can you suggest, uh, can you please suggest me someone? Uh, I didn't quite get to make, but yeah, you can always message me and then I'll be able to. Um, I'll be able to address you uh, via email or LinkedIn or whatever. I'll, I'll be able to assist you. But again, uh, it will take time for me to respond, but I'll, I will guarantee that I'll respond to each and every one of your questions. If possible, share that slide and tools. Yes, I'm going to share it, Macklin, uh, with your professor, and they will give it to you. Thank you, sir, for the informative and innovation. Never you talk, I learned a lot of things. Yes, uh, uh, it's a pleasure for me to make. Uh, to address your uh, the, the brightest minds and uh, from NGM College, so it's, it's really a pleasure for me. It's kind of giving back to the community for me, so it's really a pleasure for me to talk to you folks, uh, address you folks. So thank uh, you. Yep. So shall we conclude the session, sir? Yes, I am done. Um, yes, as I probably um, I can email you, um, Bubadi. Um, my contact address is uh, um, shown in the PPT. Um, okay, for email address as well as for the LinkedIn, please uh, feel free to contact me. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. So thank you for being a resource person and giving wonderful talk and uh, providing a good presentation and various real time examples. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Participants, thank you for your uh, questions. Uh, tomorrow for the day three FDP, please remember it's not the evening session. It's 10:30 uh, in the morning. The resource person is Partiman Rangaraj, Agile Project Manager, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Will give talk on strategy planning and execution of effective teaching. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay sir.